<clears throat> Hello. It's the lazy gardener. The lazy gardener, yeah, right. Um, all right, so we're here for another garden tour, and this is in collaboration with Homesteaders of America. This is our our August garden tour. Mm -hmm. So, what what you got for us? <laughs> You're supposed to ask me questions. Um, okay, so it's like an interview. Yeah. Um, all right, so how many pounds of tomatoes have you picked at this point? Um, 3,500 pounds. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. Um, all right, and are you, do you have a lot more coming? Yeah, there's quite a few out there. It's hard <clears> to guess. I was expecting 1,500 more pounds. Uh, you know two weeks ago but we've already passed that so there's probably another 1500 pounds out there if i had to guess because we keep getting that question from customers like mm -hmm. how much longer are you going to have them yeah because um that's kind of what i was estimating anyway i was hoping for 10 pounds per plant yeah and i know there's like 600 plants out there but they're not all the big beef production type plant so there's 500 of those. So I was expecting, or I was estimating or hoping for at least 10 pounds per plant, which will be 5,000 pounds. So we'll see. I think we'll get there. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's what I, that 3,500 pounds is sellable tomatoes. I mean, we've probably had 800 pounds of coals, wouldn't you think? I don't even know how many coals I don't we've, know. we've given away or sold. Or whatever. Yeah. So that number's already probably close to 4,500 pounds total, but I've just been measuring the um, saleable ones. Yeah. Um, someone asked us how much we, how do we know how much we've harvested? And I just oh. told them we've been weighing, you've been weighing yeah. them as you harvest them. Well, I know how much a bucket, a bucket, bucket is. full weighs, so I just yeah. count the buckets. Yeah. Um. So, but initially I was weighing, weighing them all. I would put them all in a box and weigh the box and I had it down to the pound. But now I'm just estimating by bucket. So. Yeah. This time of the year is hard because the weeds take over. That's what I've been doing this morning is weed eating out in the tomato patch. There's a ton, a ton of morning glories and I don't know, all kinds of weeds that have taken over. Once, you know, once I started harvesting, it was hard to have time to maintain. So, yeah. I mean, just a matter of two weeks and the weeds just took over. Yeah. So I've been out there weed eating <laughs> in the lanes, in the row, in, in between the rows of tomatoes. Yeah. Trying to get it beat back. And you were using like a wheel hoe. Yeah. During, uh, yeah. In the middle of the rows and stuff. Yeah. Um, yep. So when they're done, when the tomatoes are done or close to being done, I'll probably pull it all out, pull all the stakes out and put some tarps down because I want to plant a winter cover crop out there. Some wheat and some uh, daikon radish and some turnips and oats and I don't know what all we'll plant out there. Yeah. Just to kind of hold those nutrients in place until next, next year. So speaking of fall crops, have you started some? I started some pumpkins and um, I've got those trays ready for collards and cabbages, but other than that, no, I haven't. Okay. Yeah. I'll probably wait until, until a little later because usually if I start turnips and things in August, the, the worms get them pretty bad. Oh. So I may wait till like September 1st or 15th to start turnips and things. Gotcha. But cabbages and collards take longer. Like turnips are pretty quick but collards and cabbages can grow for three or four months. So mm. I'm gonna go ahead and start those in trays.
what besides the tomatoes what did well this year in the garden this summer um squash yeah the squash tomatoes cucumbers uh sweet corn it did pretty well what yeah. did not go well the okra <laughs> yeah the yeah okra. people kept asking us for okra and i was like Sorry. yeah i planted it three times i mean it looks good now but it's not really producing very much it, you know some of it's six feet tall out there now but mm -hmm. i've only picked like 10 pounds off of mm -hmm. you know a hundred foot row yeah um the green beans did pretty well it, you know, we had all that rain early we had like 15 inches in a week or something mm -hmm. real early and it washed two-thirds of them away but yeah um but the ones that survived did well. I think we would we pick four bushels. I think so. I think yeah. Can can four bushels. Yeah. And then a friend of ours came and picked probably two or three bushels after that. Mm-hmm. There's more out there. I just haven't had time to pick them. Oh. <laughs> I was hoping to just keep them as dry beans or something. Okay. I don't know, we'll see. Shelly beans, I think, is what you call them. And are we? The peas are ready. We need to pick peas. Oh, okay. Out I was going to ask you about yeah. peas. Okay. It's just this time of the year, if you don't keep up with the weeds, uh, you know, we're no-till and so it's really difficult to keep the weeds out. And the beans and the peas are so thick. I mean, the spacing was pretty close and so the vines are pretty thick and the weeds are pretty thick around them. So mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to get in there. Yeah. Especially when there's snakes around here. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We've seen some copperheads and rattlesnakes and yeah. Yeah. We tried to catch a keen snake last night and bring it home, but <laughs> I was just saying the girls' flowers have done pretty well. Yeah. Um, you just can't get to them. It's so thick out there. Yeah. Travis and I planted a cover crop between the tomatoes and the flowers to, to keep it from washing away when it rains and to also uh, try to hold some of the nutrients from all the fertilizer I used to keep it, keep it there. Because you can plant a cover crop like that and that crop takes up the, the excess nutrients in the ground and then once you put a tarp over it and kill it, those nutrients stay there mm -hmm. in, in that organic matter. So. Gotcha. Yeah, but it's so thick because we, we walked through beside the tomatoes and the flowers and just planted it from end to end and so you can't even get up through there. You know, it's 10 feet tall in some places. Mm -hmm. I did a video about cover crop, didn't I? Yes, the, about the cows helping yeah. you plant the cover crop. Yeah, yeah. so I used the same seed, the sorghum sedan and the millet and the sunflowers? peas and the sunflowers and the buckwheat. It's a good mix. Yeah. The animals seem to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, we've had the milk cow and the uh, sheep in on that cover crop, trying to knock it down a little bit. Because mm -hmm. if you once you graze the top third of the plant, it causes the roots to die back a little bit, and then it all regrows back. Mm -hmm. So it's Joel Salatin calls it pulsing the pasture, mm -hmm. where you graze it off and it dies back, and then it grows back. It's just okay. Just that's how you build soil. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, you harvested our giant pumpkin. Yeah. Yeah, it's right here somewhere. Where is it? Right there. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. And it was. Yeah, it's rotten. Rotten. So it's not very heavy. It looks big, but I, it's not heavy at all. Maybe 40 pounds. We were wanting to weigh it. Yeah. But, it, yeah. I learned some things, though. I learned that I shouldn't cut all the runners off the vine. I was doing that initially, cutting all the, the new vines that produce pumpkins off of the main vine. But what that did um, is it, it caused the vine to die sooner than it should have, I'm pretty sure. Mm. I should have just um, picked the pumpkins, the new pumpkins off. We'll try it again next year. And you had started pumpkins for a pumpkin patch. Yeah. And they didn't do well, to, they didn't sprout, did they? Yeah, the there's, first a few, one? there's a few down there. But Maybe you, half of them sprouted. Okay. Yeah. I thought you replanted because the, all the ones you planted to start with didn't sprout. I think the birds birds got the seeds out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, we've got uh, several cooking type pumpkins and two carving type pumpkins. Mm -hmm. So we'll plant a few. 
we won't have a ton, but we'll plant a few, mm -hmm. especially the cooking ones. They, you know, if I plant them now, they'll be we'll be harvesting at the end of October and November. That'd and be so, good. Yeah, they should last us through the winter to eat. Be good. Um, and we harvested all of our butternut squash there in the house. Yeah. There's quite a few, a few of that. Mm -hmm. A few of those weren't there. Mm -hmm. Probably like a hundred pounds of it. If you added it all up, there was a bunch of them. Yeah. Um, that makes some soup. Yeah, we I do. I bet you can take our, our uh, milk and make a creamy soup with that. Yeah, that would um, be good. Butternut squash. Yeah, I've never really made butternut squash soup. Yeah. Um, so I need to... Yeah. Need to do that. We could freeze some of that or yeah, can it or something. Um, so I don't know if I've said this on on YouTube before. I know I have on Instagram, but we I don't love canning. I just don't. I want to love canning, and I think one day I will. Maybe possibly when the kids aren't so little or I don't have a baby, <laughs> when I can just just concentrate on that um, for days and days at a time. But uh, we have canned some things, um, and we've canned some, some like sort of spicy salsa, mm -hmm. sort of spicy salsa, and some sauce, some tomato sauce that took a long time to mm -hmm. make, but we got a lot of that, so that's good because we can use that for soups or um, pasta dishes or anything like that so i'm excited about that and i've been freezing peaches for the last few days um i froze some of our patty pan squash yesterday i just cut it up and uh, froze it and we usually saute that anyways i think it'll be okay to get it out um, i know it's hard to really preserve squashes very well but i think that'll work okay um yeah what else uh, we're going to have a ton of pears. I mean, that yeah. tree is loaded down, so we're going to start harvesting our pears. I mean, yeah. I've already picked up probably 10 bucketfuls and fed them to the pigs. Yeah. Just the ones that fall on the ground. Yeah. And grapes. We'll have grapes soon. Not soon, but maybe the end of this month. Yeah. We'll have some grapes. So. Um, that's about it, really. Peaches. we got a bunch of peaches going yeah. on right now. Yeah. Those are good. I yeah. love to go out there and just eat them off the tree. Yeah, I see you sometimes. Mm -hmm. I laugh when it's I look nice out break. there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's taking a break eating peaches. Yeah, Our good. blueberries did not do well this year. Mm -hmm. Not not mm -hmm. like they usually do. Yeah. But yeah. we pruned them. Yeah. You know, your dad pruned them. Um, yeah. When? When was it? Last year. Okay. And um, so they just didn't do as well this year as they usually do. But hopefully next we're year. About, well, we're thinking about cutting them down to the ground. Oh, and starting bush, over. Bush out from the ground gotcha. so the bush is a little thicker lower down gotcha yeah they're really really tall we have to get ladders yeah. and stuff to to get up in them most of the time but if we do that we won't have blueberries again next year yeah yeah we love blueberries We've, we're still eating on them from last year we can do yeah, some of the bushes i guess and, and wait till the following year to do the rest yeah oh that's a good idea um we'll probably have some pe pecans pecans how do you say it <laughs> I say both. Pecan. Pecan. I, I say, say pecan. I say pecan. That's not right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's pecan. It probably is, but I've always said pecan. Yeah. Okay. Something that um, I met a, a, a guy this week <laughs> who was telling me about uh, pawpaws. Yeah. And so that kind of piqued my interest to go try to find some in the woods. I've been seeing a lot of our YouTube friends talking about pawpaws. Yeah. And I didn't know what those were. Really. They start, um, I was wondering about the bees, but they're on those crepe myrtles, aren't they? Um, yeah, he said they start falling in September. So okay. he, he talked like it's one of those things where the, the most perfect pawpaw is when you go and you touch the tree and it falls and you catch it in your hand. Otherwise, when it falls, it just rots pretty quick mm. on the ground. Like when you touch the fruit? Like, no, when you... like you, if you just bump the tree and, oh, okay. it, and it falls off, that's that's how you want it. Oh, okay. But if you pick it too early, like if you pick it off the tree, it's like a persimmon. It's bitter. So it, it, it sounds like it has a very short ripening window. Yeah. 
which is probably hard because you know this time of the year we start having hurricanes and stronger storms thunderstorms even mm -hmm. and um, it'll knock them off the tree before they're ripe mm -hmm. so I bet it is a, a southern delicacy yeah because things have to be perfect from what yeah. it sounds like so I don't think I've ever had one and I've never like I don't think we've ever had one I've never around our either. property or anything I've never like, even I mean I've heard of them but I didn't realize they grew around here right honestly. so be nice to be able to identify the tree in the winter time yeah because that's when I'm in the woods and I could just flag it and right come back and check it yeah anything else nope <laughs> <laughs> I think we've kind of hit a little bit of overwhelm just um, it, it always happens this time of year yeah it really is like this yeah the the end of um, the end of July, beginning of August is usually when it's like, oh my gosh, we're really tired and yeah. and it doesn't let up. Like this is, you know, yeah. Um, I mean, things are changing. Like we're, you know, things are starting to be done for the season and th and other things are starting. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's always changing, but it's just like, it's a lot of work this time of year, especially if you're wanting to save things. Um, yeah. At a moment's notice, you have to be ready. It's not like like I'm such a planner that it's it's really hard for me to just stop. You know what I've already got planned and and spend days preserving things. That's that's just hard for me. I, I want to get better about that. Um, but and I think every year I'm going to get better about being prepared for this season. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean. We're, we're working toward having more focus anyway that's that's a big part of it is we're not we're not completely focused on here's what we're doing yet yeah and we're and, and every year we get a little closer to that yeah and then things are going to change you know you find what works and then you you make that better but it's hard when you when you're when you can't be focused on just a couple things and be good at it yeah you know when you're trying to do several different things that's true and i just mean like it would be nice to be able to focus on homestead farming just, just here's what we're doing yeah you know and that that includes like a, a whole bunch of different things but you know we have a lot of different streams of income and you know streams of energy expense so. <laughs> <laughs> right um and just the heat you know yeah you know before july it, it wasn't a problem to spend all day out in the garden yeah and weeding and you know taking care of things yeah it does but make now, you very it's tired like, if you're not done by 10 o'clock with things you know it's very difficult yeah to stay and to stay outside not, not outside but stay out in the garden in the sun like it's mm -hmm. very difficult yeah yep you go through quite a few shirts a day yeah <laughs> yeah i mean that I've been working for what three hours outside. And <laughs> this was after thirty minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure many of you who are watching this, if you have your own gardens or you know your own homesteads, then you're probably feeling the same thing. Um, we'd love to hear from you if you want to comment below, like what's been your struggle. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, he's struggling. Yeah. What's been your struggle this season? Um, what has been your victory uh, this season? And we just want to hear those stories because we like to we like to talk to others about what they're doing and um, and hear from you guys. So yeah, uh, so you've heard from it. us. Yeah, it's worth it. I mean, it's a lot of work, but it's definitely worth it. Yeah, it makes yeah, you look so forward too. to winter time. You know, I enjoy the planning and figuring right. out what to do. But, yeah. Um, you know, this lifestyle. And what we're doing it is worth it. So it's yep. worth the work. It is. And I was reminding myself that this week when when I was stopping to to you know do some preserving and things that plus run a business like he was saying, like we have we have so many you know, irons in the fire right now. Mm -hmm. He's still working full time, um, aside from the homestead. So it's we've got a lot going on and and it does it does make you tired it does make you weary sometimes but but you know this is the busy season for us and it does get slower 
we do get to enjoy the fruits of, of mm -hmm. our labor at some point and and just you know just set you know just step back and and really see all that we've done because right now it's just kind of like everyone has their head down we're just like we're working there's mm -hmm. not a whole lot of rest and um, like it was it's it's been a struggle just for me and you to sit down and talk like this so um, anyways it'll it'll slow down it'll get better and then we'll be really we'll be really happy that we work so hard this season yeah. so all right well i guess that's it check out the playlist of all the other um homesteads that are doing garden tours this week i'll link that below talk to you next time bye